The world of e-mountain biking might appear a little confusing from the outside and that could be a deciding factor when it comes to buying that new bike. But luckily, they're fairly simple. So today we're gonna go through all those questions you might have if you're new to e-mountain biking. Right, time for a little quick fire question round. First up is what power modes are available? Well, you usually got a low, a mid and a high power, namely eco, trail and boost. You might have a couple of others thrown into the mix, but that largely depends on the motor manufacturer. And don't forget, you've got off mode too. So how does that pedal assist actually work? Well, first up, you need to pedal. If you don't pedal, you're not going anywhere. And the amount of assistance that you get from the different systems is gonna to vary too. Bosch in eco mode, well, it's gonna assist you 60% up those climbs. And in turbo mode, a whopping 340%. And don't forget about that EMTB mode too, an automatic selection, which is gonna give you power on demand as you, as you require, quite like an automatic car. Then there's a Brose motor, which is used and specialized on the Levo models, Canevo. Well, that assists you four times the amount of input that you're putting into it, meaning that you're gonna get up those hills four times faster for quarter of the effort. How fast do they go? Well, they go 25 kilometers an hour in Europe and they're limited to 32 kilometers an hour elsewhere. You can, of course, exceed the speed limit, but you're gonna be going under your own steam. And as soon as you drop back below that limit, the assist kicks back in. Can you lift that speed limit? Well, you definitely can, and it's called de-restriction, but it voids any warranty, and it's definitely something we don't suggest you do. You can ride that bike on private land, but that's about it. If you do ride it on the road, you could risk having an accident, and if you do get caught in an accident, especially in places like France, where the fine is 30,000 pounds, and you could risk a year in prison. So how do you charge your e-mountain bike? Well, it's simple. You simply plug it into the mains and plug the charger into your bike, much like you do your mobile phone. Some manufacturers allow the battery to remove from the bike, meaning you can charge it wherever you like and leave the bike locked up in your workshop or your garage. It's simply just lifting a flap. So simple. Just lift the flap up and plug the charger in. Simple. Right, time to switch things up a little bit. This is where the difference lies between e-mountain bike and mountain bike. This is all about motors and batteries. Is there much difference in the e-bike motors? Well, yes, there definitely is. Loads of different characteristics going on here. You've got motors that have instant engagement. You have motors that make more noise. Some are heavier than others. Some are more powerful. Lots of different factors to consider on an e-bike motor. Get along to a demo day to see which one suits you. But if you want to check out a video, we've actually done that here on the channel. So check that one out. When it comes to motors, well, there's a couple of different options. You've got mid-drive motors like this on my high bike, or you've got hub-drive motors. Well, the hub-drive motors, they tend to come on the cheaper bikes. Now, they are great motors for commuting or basic light trail use on mountain bike trails. But the downsides of them, they are quite limited by the power when it comes to those technical climbs. You can't amplify the power of the motor with the gears on those bikes because the motor is in the back wheel. Also quite heavy as well. You've got all that weight bias on the back wheel, meaning it's not quite as well balanced. So when you're hitting off-road situations, the mid-drive motor is the one for mountain biking. As I mentioned, you can amplify the power of the motor with the gears on the back of the bike, meaning technical terrain and massive climbs become really easy. You've got that weight down nice and low and central in the bike, meaning it's great in those off-road situations. So battery sizes, what does it all mean? Well, most full-powered e-mountain bikes have between 500 watt hours to 700 watt hours battery on them. The bigger the battery, the bigger the ride, the more range you're gonna get out of it. You can, of course, extend that range even further by plugging an extender battery into the system if that system will allow it. If your bike doesn't have that option, you can, of course, stick a spare battery in your backpack and that's gonna double your range. So high-powered or low-powered e-mountain bikes, well, there's definitely a couple of different contenders in the market right now. You've got those lightweight e-bikes that are slightly less powerful with smaller batteries and smaller motors. Doesn't mean that you can't get the range out of those bikes. You just gotta work that a little bit harder to do the same things that the full fat e-mountain bikes can do. When it comes to those full fat e-mountain bikes, well, they're coming in at around 20 to 25 kilos, so a bit heavier, but they've got these big powerful motors on there, big batteries, and in turn can do big days out. And how far can you go? Well, that's gonna be limited by the size of your battery. Simply, you can go further on a 700 watt hour battery than you can on a 400 watt hour battery. Other things that might limit your range, it's gonna be temperature, the amount of elevation you're climbing, your fitness and the ground conditions, all gonna pay off on how far you can actually go on one battery. So how long does a battery last before it needs to be replaced? Well, most manufacturers warranty their battery for up to about a thousand cycles. 
it's not that the battery will stop working after that, it will just lose its ability to hold that charge for as long. So you might find after those thousand cycles, your battery is gonna be dropping charge a little bit quicker. So how much are those batteries gonna cost when it comes to the replacement? Well, there's a rough guide, the Shimano 504 watt hour battery, that comes in at around 500 pounds. If you're running the 700 watt hour battery from Specialized, that comes in at around 1100 pounds. So remember, the bigger the battery, the bigger the cost. So can you fly with your e-mountain bike? Yes, you definitely can, but one thing you will need to leave at home is gonna be the battery. Now this requires a little bit of forward planning. You need to get in touch with your destination and get a battery rented ready to plug into your e-bike for when you arrive. Then you ride and then return the battery at the end of your trip, no dramas. Other things you can do is ship a battery out via a dedicated courier. Now, should you warm up your motor before you go full power turbo on it? Well, no, the only uh, motor that I'm aware of that has got an oil bath on it, meaning that the oil would need to be warmed up is the MPF unit that you're gonna find on bikes such as the Grape. The rest of them are gonna be factory lubricated, meaning that you can go straight into boost mode, no dramas. So how should you leave your batteries if you're gonna keep your e-bike in storage? Or how about if you're gonna be riding in the next few days? Well, a battery, if you're gonna be keeping your bike in storage, should be left at around 60%. I'd whip it out of the bike and try and put it somewhere nice and safe in the house, somewhere not too hot and not too cold. Batteries are just like us. They like a nice temperature. But if you're gonna be using your e-bike the next day or next couple of days, there is no problem whatsoever in charging it up to a full 100%. So do e-bike motors overheat? Well, no, it's a simple question. I've had it once on a hub drive unit where I was going up the side of a massive mountain at crazy speeds on really steep terrain. And obviously any motor, if you put it under abnormal load for a long time, it could possibly overheat. But don't forget, if it does overheat on an e-bike, you've got all that software on there that's going to shut the motor down before any damage is hopefully going to occur. So is an e-mountain bike more expensive to maintain than a regular mountain bike? Well, I think the items that definitely do get more of a hammering is gonna be things like your drive train, things like your chain, your cassette and your chain ring are gonna wear out a little bit more because you're under, you know, under a lot more stress from the motor and maybe even more miles than you would do riding on your regular mountain bike. Therefore, an essential piece of kit for your toolbox is gonna to be a chain checker. Now the chain wears quite quick on an e-bike, so you want to keep on top of that because it can take out things such as your cassette and your chain ring and those items are a lot more expensive to replace than a chain. Other things you might see wear out a little bit more often is tires, particularly rear one, and your brake pads because you've got a heavier bike and you're probably riding it in a lot more slop. But anything you do on your e-bike, you definitely need to remember to turn that motor off, especially if you're working on things like the drivetrain. So are there any tips for washing your e-mountain bike? Well, you've got to use your head. As we all know, water and electricity certainly don't mix. So you can power wash your bike, but just make sure you're not directly aiming that jet at any of the electrical components. And of course, if you're using a muck-off power washer that's designed for bikes, then that won't be a problem at all. When it comes to washing, never wash your e-mountain bike upside down. The motor designers have got holes in the motor and the casings to allow water to run away. If you wash it upside down, you're simply gonna fill up that down tube and your battery and your motor are gonna be pretty much submerged, so it's not gonna be liking that. Then I think after you've washed it, a water dispersing spray to put over the bike, it's just gonna drive all that moisture out away from those electrical contacts and make sure your bike is nice and dry. And dry is definitely something you need to think about too. A lot of people wash their bikes and put them away wet. They get them out next time and they're all rusty. And then lastly, I think a big mistake a lot of people do is oiling and lubing a wet chain when they go to put the bike away. You need to make sure that the chain is nice and dry, then put the lube on. Because if you're lubing a wet chain, it's gonna lock all that moisture in and make it go rusty. So how are you gonna be getting your nice shiny new e-mountain bike to the trails? What's the safest way of doing it? Well, you're gonna ride it, of course. Well, jokes aside, if you've got an estate car or a van, you simply chuck it in the back as you would do a normal mountain bike. But if you're looking to transport it on the outside of your car, then you need to be thinking about racks. Now, the safest way to do this is gonna be a tow bar mounted rack, purely because of the weight of the bike. You can, of course, use roof bars, but a lot of manufacturers only warranty these to around 20 kilos. Some riders whip out the front wheel and the batteries and they get below that weight limit but that's your call at the end of the day remember if you are transporting your bikes on the outside of the car it's pretty important to remove the batteries out of them just in case you get in an accident stick them inside the footwell of your car wrapped up in a towel nice and safe that way they're going to get nice and warm you might even get a bit more range out of it when you hit the trails 
Right, time to talk a little bit about some riding tips when it comes to your e-mountain bike. There's a few questions here. Things such as, should I turn my e-mountain bike off when I ride downhill? Well, it's not something that I would advise. I think it's the nice thing about an e-bike is, is that you ride in and you drop below at 25 kilometers an hour or 32 kilometers an hour if you're elsewhere in the world. It will assist you back up to that speed and beyond. Another thing is if you're running motors such as a Shimano E8000 motors, that's got a cadence sensor in there. So as soon as you go to turn the motor back on when you want to ride, say, back along the fire road to the top of the downhill, it's gonna throw an error code up. So it's just gonna interrupt that flow. So I don't think there's any benefits on turning your e-mountain bike off when it comes to hitting the downhill sections. So what's it like to ride if the battery was to go flat? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably not gonna be the most fun you're ever gonna have on an e-mountain bike. Luckily enough, it hasn't happened to me too many times. I think it's an art that you perfect over the years. If you wanna try what it's gonna be like, then just ride with the system off. It's gonna be exactly the same feeling. And the final question is, can I get fit riding an e-mountain bike? Well, you definitely can. And that's the great thing about these bikes. They are fun and fitness combined together. When you first get your e-mountain bike, you might find yourself hitting the trails in a higher assist mode. Then as your fitness improves, you can tailor that assist back down all the way to eco and maybe even off. Remember, if you're riding the e-mountain bike with the power switched off, you're gonna get more of a workout than a regular mountain bike because these things weigh twice as much. But that's it for the questions for today. If you guys got any more questions, drop them in the comments box down below and I'll hopefully get back to you. Or if not, hashtag AskEMBN and we will put them in the Ask EMBN show where we answer all your questions that you guys have got for anything to do with e-mountain bikes. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and make sure you find and follow us on social media too. Cheers.